In this lecture, what we'll be doing is we'll be solving a couple of example problems involving the Rankine cycle. And we'll begin uh, by looking at a simple Rankine cycle, just so that we get some practice at uh, solving these types of problems. So there's our problem statement. Uh, what we're dealing with is a simple ideal Rankine cycle. And we're told that it's operating between the pressure limits, the uh, boiler pressure at 3 MPa and down to the condenser pressure of 50 kPa. Uh, we're told that the uh, steam at the inlet to the turbine is at 400 degrees C. So that would correspond to the 3 MPa uh, boiler pressure. Now the mass flow rate is given at 25 kilograms per second and we're asked to do a couple of things. One is to show the cycle on a TS diagram which is always a good idea to be able to figure out what's going on uh, with respect to the saturation lines. The second thing that we're after is the thermal efficiency of the cycle and finally the net power output. So that would be a power output in megawatts. So that's the, the problem that we have before us. And whenever you're doing these types of problems, it's always a good idea to begin by writing down the information you know. And we will also write out the TS diagram. So let's get started by doing that. So that's the information that we have before us. Now, now looking at the TS diagram for this cycle. It's not too complex. So we write our two phase line for the cycle. And remember, we always start at the compressed liquid region over on the left. That is state one. We go through the pump. That takes us up to state two, which then goes into the boiler. We follow the lines and we go into a superheated state. That takes us to state three. And then we come through our turbine and we expand to some point. Right now, we don't know where we are expanding to. It could be superheated. It could be right on the saturated vapor line or it could be in the two phase region. And so that will be state four. And that takes us back into the condenser. So what we'll be doing here, uh, whenever you're solving one of these problems, it's a bit of a puzzle that, that you're solving. And you usually start, like any puzzle, uh, you start with the conditions that you know. So consequently, what we'll do, we'll start at state one. And we'll go into the steam tables for that. And, and so what we'll do, you go into the steam table, and here you would be looking at uh, saturated liquid or saturated water. We know this here is at 50 kPa, and this here is at 3 megapascal. So you go into the saturated or the uh, steam table, saturated liquid, 50 kPa, and you pull off the enthalpy. And I'm going to skip the units, but that would be kilojoules per kilogram. And another thing to pull off at this point, let's get the specific volume. And after you do a number of these problems, you'll know which things to pull out of the steam table at which point. But you'll see why we want the specific volume in a moment. So that's the specific volume at state one as well as the enthalpy. 
Now we have a pump which takes us from one to two. At, at the initial state here, we have no idea how to estimate what state two is, but what we'll be doing is we'll be taking advantage of our reversible steady flow work equation. And that enables us to say the work in the pump is the specific volume at one multiplied by the change in pressure between state two and state one. And that is equal to the change in enthalpy. So by knowing the enthalpy at state one, we can use this equation in order to determine the enthalpy at state two. Because if we look here, we pulled this off the steam table and we know P2, that's the boiler pressure, P1 is the condenser pressure. So we know everything in that equation. We also know H1 and that enables us to get H2. So when we calculate this, what we find is the value is 3.0385. And again, that would be kilojoules per kilogram. And so we can sub it back in and solve then for H2. And when we do that, we find that H2 is that. So the next thing to do, uh, we, we have state one and we've figured that out. We figured out state two the next place we want to go is to state three. So in order to do that, what we have to do first of all is determine are we superheated. And so you go and you look at three megapascals uh, and 400 degrees C. Are you in a saturated region or are you superheated? And for this case, it'll be superheated. So that takes us to state three. So you pull out the value of the enthalpy there and let's pull out the entropy. We're going to need that. And I'll show you in a moment why we're doing that. And that would be kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin for entropy. It's different than enthalpy. Now, state three, we just pulled off the uh, steam table. It's superheated. Now we're going to use the value of enthalpy there in order to figure out where state four is. Right now we don't know where it is, but we know the entropy. And we can say, or assuming that this is going to be an isentropic expansion process in the turbine, we're told no different. That enables us then to get a direct link between three and four because we can write entropy at three is equal to entropy at four. And knowing the pressure, we can then determine state four. So that is the next step that we will be doing here. So we said S3 was equal to S4. And then uh, we know that this is occurring at 50 kPa. And it turns out for that value, we are in the two phase region. And so those are the values uh, off the steam table for SF and then that would be SFG. And from that, we can then solve for the quality at state four, eight, nine, six, six. So th this is really a cycle that's not that great because ideally you don't want to have uh, expansion into the two phase region or you get the droplets and the drop in efficiency. Uh, but knowing that we can then determine the enthalpy at state four. So with that, 
we have all of the states specified because we just determined state four. So we have one, two, three, and four. And so now what we can do, basically go ahead and start applying the first law between components in order to determine the thermal efficiency. If we go back to the problem statement, they want us to get the thermal efficiency and the net power output. So we're going to work on the thermal efficiency. And we can write that the thermal efficiency is the network in divided by the heat in. And the network is equal to the work out of the turbine minus the work that we put into the pump. Now, applying the first law for a steady flow device with no heat transfer to the turbine and no kinetic or potential energy, that turns out to be just H3 minus H4. And then similarly for the pump, that is H2 minus H1. We know those values, so we can now substitute them. So we get that for the network and the heat in the heat in, we can evaluate, if we go back to our TS diagram, that's going to be what's going on uh, in the boiler. So this is where we have Q in right here. So we're going from state two up to state three as we go through the boiler. Knowing the values of enthalpy. So there we have work net and Q in, and with that, we can go back and take each of these and plug them into this equation up here. So let's go about doing that, and then that will enable us to determine the thermal efficiency of this cycle. And just like we would expect, it's not the greatest thermal efficiency. It's 28.4%. That's because we're expanding quite far into the two-phase region, and, and you lose efficiency as a result of that. Now, the, that was the first part of the problem. Uh, let's see here. So we have the thermal efficiency. The next thing, and we wrote out the TS diagram, the next thing they want us to do is calculate the net power output. So let's tackle that. So from before, we wrote work net was 820.45 kilojoules per kilogram. The network output is just going to be the mass flow rate multiplied by the work per unit mass that we just calculated. And what we get is that this plant has a power output of 20.511 megawatts. So that concludes this example problem. You can see it's kind of straightforward and simple, but whenever you're solving these problems, uh, write out the TS diagram to begin with. You don't always know all the states, and so sometimes you kind of got to jump around a little bit. Um, had we drawn this a little differently here with expansion down into the superheated region, I would have had to have redrawn the diagram, but I made a guess that it went into the two-phase region, which in, in the end it did, as we could tell by the quality. But anyway, so that, that's the TS diagram. It came out correct in the first place. So that concludes that example problem. Uh, the next segment will take a look at a more challenging example problem, again, dealing with the Rankin.